If things really get hot and you exhaust your CO2 in the first unit, you can get more by doing two things. One, pull at least two pull boxes in the next unit. Use your third and fourth unit supply if needed. Two, throw the return flow valve here. CO2 will flow through the flexible connector to the horn already used in combating the fire. If a fire occurs in the electric cabinet, on most units we have built-in CO2 discharge nozzles. Pull any pull box near the cabinet, then throw the directional valve counterclockwise. This discharges CO2 inside the cabinet. That means you keep the cabinet doors shut. In addition to the pipe systems, two portable dry powder extinguishers are provided. One in the cab, one in the engine room on these diesels. All of our switchers have two or three 20-pound CO2 portable extinguishers. In the cab, and under the engine hood on the fireman's side. On electric equipment, two 15-pound portables are provided. P5s are being equipped with a pipe system, which will release CO2 in the transformer, preventive coil, and switch group area. Yet with all this firefighting equipment, CO2, dry powder portables, elaborate pipe systems. We're still having expensive losses, like this. Why? Because the best firefighting apparatus is useless if not used properly. It might just as well not be there. What then should be done when fire strikes? Just watch. like a turbocharger on this engine. Okay, pull emergency fuel trip after we stop, see what you can do. I'll come back and give you a hand. Engine 5755, train 32, calling view. View, we have a fire in the engine room. Call the Duncannon Fire Department. We're stopping at Aqueduct Road Crossing. Okay, I got that at view, 5755. We got a fire in the engine room. I'll let you know in a few minutes how long it'll be. Have you got a fog nozzle? You bet. We're all set. Boys, she's all out. Fire's all out. We'll be ready to leave in a minute, but we'll only have two units working. Okay. This is the 
way a fire should be attacked. It was small, and it stayed that way. Road delay, slight. Physical damage, negligible. Financial loss, none. Why? Because these men knew how to use their equipment and worked fast. The specific steps they took should be remembered. Detect fire as soon as possible. Use the train phone to report and get help, even though it might not be needed. If possible, stop at road crossings, overpasses, or underpasses where the civil fire department can help you. Pull the emergency fuel cutoff. Prepare the CO2 system for action by first opening the pull box and pulling the handle hard as far as it'll go. Second, throw valve handle to the left at the hose station to be used. Third, run the hose and discharge horn to the fire. Since each pair of cylinders lasts only about a minute, don't squeeze the handle until you're ready to put out the fire. Those steps will apply to a lot of fires, but there are some general things to keep in mind in other situations. If the fire occurs in an electrical cabinet which has a built-in CO2 nozzle, all that has to be done is pull the handle in the pull box. Then open the valve located near the cabinet. CO2 will be released inside. Keep the cabinet doors closed. If you've exhausted all the CO2 in your first unit, go to the second, pull at least two boxes, and turn the connecting valve counterclockwise. On BH-50s, you only have to pull a pull box. The two units are automatically interconnected. Proper use of portable extinguisher means removing extinguisher from bracket by carrying handle, carry to the point of the fire. Remove operating locking pin and squeeze the grip valve handle on discharge horn. Direct the stream at the base of the fire. Continue to spray the burned area after the flames are extinguished to prevent flare-ups. For fires in the trucks, or in rare instances of collision with an automobile where gasoline may have been sprayed on the unit, the portable dry powder extinguishers should be used. As a rule, use the dry powders on the outside, the CO2 inside, but use everything you've got outside or inside to get the fire out. Fire extinguishing instruction cards have been placed in the cabs of our locomotives. They are the key to fire control. Don't wait till you have a fire to read it. Whenever fire extinguishers are used, it must be reported on your work report. This protects the next man from being caught with empty extinguishers. The means to reduce road delays, physical damage, financial loss, and personal injuries are provided on your locomotives. It's up to you whether your engine lines up like this, or keeps rolling like this. It's up to you to know what in blazes goes on.